and welcome to the Mint Report. This is our wrap-up of the day's business news. Here are the top stories. Axis Bank announces merger with Enom Securities. Finance Ministry recommends decontrolling urea prices. And Indian demand lifts the global market for gold. One of India's biggest private banks is taking control of a leading brokerage firm. On Wednesday, Axis Bank announced a merger with Enom Securities. The all-stock deal is worth 2,100 crores. Enom will get 3.3% of Axis Bank while becoming its subsidiary. Meanwhile, Enom's current director, Manish Chokhani, will remain in charge for another two years, and the brokerage's co-founder, Bala Bansali, will get a seat on the board of Axis. The Axis Enom deal still needs clearance from market regulator SEBI and, of course, the RBI. And in other news, the case for freeing prices of urea has found new support from within the government. Mint has learned that the finance ministry has recommended the prices be decontrolled. Its recommendation was made to the Department of Fertilizers. In its note, the finance ministry said urea should be brought under an updated nutrient-based regime. India's farmers use about 27 million tons of urea every year, but the country produces only 22. The finance ministry also recommended that imports be freed up. At present, only three state-run companies are allowed to buy urea overseas. And back in corporate, Honda Motor is heading to southern India. Its subsidiary, Honda Motorcycle and Scooter India, plans to set up a new plant in Andhra Pradesh. The company will invest a thousand crores to set up the facility. Honda Motorcycle already has two plants in India, one in Haryana and another in Rajasthan. And Korean steelmaker POSCO says it's still committed to doing business here in India. The company said it will still pursue a $12 billion steel mill project in Orissa. POSCO's proposed investment in India involves mining for iron ore, building steel factory and developing a port. But the project has been dogged by delays since 2005 because it hasn't been able to get mining rights or acquire land. And finally, Indian hunger for gold has buoyed the market for the yellow metal. A new report from the World Gold Council says a surge from India and China has led to a 12% rise in demand in 2010's third quarter. And while Chinese consumers have just bought gold, Indians have been buying jewelry. Indeed, the council says jewelry demand this year could be even greater than in 2009. And that's all we have for you today. Thanks for watching.